This video is all on how to find slant asymptote. So this is part of a series of videos that I am making on rational functions. And this one in particular is on how to find a slant asymptote. Well, first of all, how do you even know if you do have a slant asymptote? And that answer is easy. What you need to do is look at the degree of the numerator. By degree, it's the highest power, which in this case, the degree of the numerator is two. And I'm going to compare it to the degree of the denominator, which in this case, I don't see one, so it is one. Now, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator by exactly one, bingo, you found yourself a slant asymptote. Now that I know that there is a slant asymptote, how do I even find it? Well, what you're going to do is use long division. Yes, I know. I do have a video on long division in case you need a refresher or you have forgotten. So the way I'm going to do this is that I'm going to write inside of my division sign 3x squared minus 2x plus 1 and I'm dividing that by x minus 1. When you go to do long division, you got to make sure that you have every power accounted for in descending order. And if not, you would have to put a placeholder. In this case, I do luckily have everything in descending order and I don't need a placeholder because I have something to the second power, to the first power, to no power. So then I start by looking at x, just the x, and I compare x to 3x squared. How many times does x go into 3x squared? x goes into 3x squared 3x times. And notice that I line up my answer on top of where I have an x by itself. So now I'm going to distribute 3x times x, 3x squared. 3x times negative 1, negative 3x. So now I draw a line, I change these signs because I'm subtracting, these cancel. Negative 2, positive 3 is positive 1x, bring down the positive 1. I do this again, x goes into x, positive 1 times, distribute. 1 times x is x, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, draw a line, change the signs, cancel, my remainder is 2. But right now, for this problem, I don't really care what the remainder is. So what I was able to find is the equation for the slant asymptote. And the equation is y equals 3x plus 1, where m is the slope, 3 over 1, and 1 is going to be the y-intercept. And if you take a look at this rational function based on what we've been learning about horizontal and vertical asymptotes, obviously it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote, especially because I know it has a slant asymptote, but it does have a vertical asymptote when the denominator is equal to zero and the vertical asymptote is x is equal to one. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like on a graph. If I were to go ahead and create my coordinate plane, I'm going to try to figure out what this graph is going to look like. I'm going to start by including both my vertical asymptote, which if you remember the vertical asymptote is whatever makes the denominator equal to zero, and my slant asymptote, which we just found, y equals 3x plus 1, by doing long division. So my slant asymptote is y equals 3x plus 1. So the vertical asymptote x equals 1 goes right here. For my slant asymptote, the y-intercept is 1. We put a point at 1. And then my slope is 3 over 1. So from here, I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And I can do that again going down, 1, 2, 3, left 1. So here is my slant asymptote. I feel like I should have done this a little bit bigger. And now my job is to figure out what is happening with the graph. The graph is either going to open something like this along that slant asymptote, same thing here, or it's possible that it's going to open inside somehow of those two dotted lines. The only way that I'm going to be able to tell what's happening is that I have to choose points around my vertical asymptote. My vertical asymptote is at x equals 1, so let's find out what happens when the graph is, let's say, 0. If I plug in 0, I'm going to end up with 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So at 0, I'm at negative 1. This is kind of indication to me that the graph is going to open something like this. If I go ahead and choose a number like 1 half, and you put this into your calculator, and put 3 times 0.5 squared minus 2 times 0.5 plus 1, is 0.75, and then I have to divide that 
by what I get when I do 0.5 minus 1, which is negative 0.5, and that's going to give me negative 1.5. So at 1 half, which is right here at 1 half, I'm going to be up at negative 1.5, which really hasn't told me anything about what is happening on that right side of the graph. It just continued to tell me what's happening on the left side of the graph. If you wanted to, you could have picked another point that's to the left of the vertical asymptote, which is x equal to 1. I went ahead and I chose 1 half, and I just used my calculator to substitute this, and I got negative 1.5. And what it does is just keeps giving me more points to kind of verify that, yes, in fact, I am correct. Now, in order for me to get the other side, I'm going to have to pick a number to the right side of the vertical asymptote, which in this case, I can pick the number 2. So what happens when I substitute 2? I get 3 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 1, which is all over 2 minus 1. Well, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 4 plus 1 over 1. 12 minus 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 divided by 1 is 9. So at 2, I'm at 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Obviously, I did not make my graph wide enough. So this right here is a much prettier picture than the one that I did for you so that you can see exactly what this graph looks like when you have a slant asymptote and a vertical asymptote. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.